Oh, Marshall, you know, you know, going back there, how you say no to sleep, we had a cousin over as well, and we didn't tell you that he had nowhere to sleep, and we put that room for him to sleep, and we filled it up with medicine, and we thought, you're going to have to find somewhere else. Well, alhamdulillah, you know, what, what I'm going to do, going back to the Gaza thing, now, sure. I want to thank all the mosques. Yeah. yeah. And every person who gave medicine, wherever you was in the UK, you gave that medicine, you made that big difference. When we went into Gaza, after travelling 16 countries, through every single terrain, through snow, snow-capped mountains, <laughs> oh, most, oh my God, what an experience. And when we got there, and when we gave that, and we saw the smile on them young brothers, our sisters, brothers there in Gaza, on their face, Alhamdulillah, it made it worth it. All the hardships that we got, but I mean, we were blessed. We were through. We were, our convoy got through. Everybody bonded together with unity. And, you know, and they couldn't believe it. You know, they said, you, we know we're not alone. I've got to tell you the story that they said to us. What they told us were that we've come here now. And uh, Alhamdulillah, you know, we know we're not alone. You've come all that way from England, so all the way to Gaza, to all these countries. We know we're not on our own. And our Muslim brothers and sisters around the world. So I want to give special thanks to everyone. I'm my mother and father and my family for being patient while I've been bringing the medicine as well. Oh, that's yeah, brilliant. and everybody else that got involved. The even that little bit, even whoever, like, Fill the bin and put the medicine in and close the back. Yo, everyone's going to get a swab, inshallah, for that. Thank you Thank you so much. And do you know how much medicine we took? 30 tons. Yeah, 30 tons. Think of the much. weight of a packet of paracetamol. Yeah, but when, when I got a phone call saying, oh, we have uh, how many? 70 pallets? I bandit to Brother Javed out there, he was watching, yeah? yeah? And they rang us up, and Brother Nassim, they rang us up, and they had so many, much better. And I thought, I thought, I can't put it in my house. <laughs> I can't put that many, what we're going to do. But luckily, brothers helped us out there as well, alhamdulillah. Yeah. We filled up a mosque, remember? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Mosque and everyone. Oh, everyone did their bit. And I think a big thank you to all the mosques for yeah, participating. And, Elias and Brother Anur, I, I, I keep to everyone, whoever not spoke about, I want to thank you all, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you for sharing that with us. So, so name, sorry, do you want to ask name a question? Yeah, I would, actually. Actually, um, Naimbai, obviously you've you've had uh, many, many journeys uh, over to Allah Subhanahu Allah's house. Is there a particular moment or a particular journey that stands out? I think um, every journey is different. We have different problems, different people who are very special, different people who cause trouble. Um, uh, the fact that as a group leader, you're looking after 300 other people. So in effect, you're making Hajj on behalf of those 300 people. So when you make that Hajj, you feel the weight of those people behind you. I think every journey is, is very different. Uh, I wouldn't say that any one of them stood out in any particular way. Uh, I would say everyone was, was very different, actually, for different reasons. Um, whether it be good or bad, because Hajj is a difficult journey. It's once in a lifetime, as much as they, you know, they're rebuilding half of Makkah at the moment, the five-star hotels are going up. It's a tough journey, mentally, physically, financially, emotionally. And every year, any company who's telling you that you know, Hajj will be perfect, it won't be, I can assure you there'll be some difficulty on the way because that's what it's about. I'm not saying that we should be, you know, go and lie on the floor, etc. because mm -hmm. now you have to lie in a bed in Makkah. That's a, one of the standard regulations. But there is difficulty on the trips. And there are some beautiful things on the trip. Um, many, many years ago, I remember with this one brother who was meant to come. We had two flights going out that day. And this brother who was meant to go to Hajj with us um, came and stayed in a hotel at the airport. As the flight was about to depart, he was nowhere didn't turn up at the airport. There was a family of three mm -hmm. sitting to go. Two of them had the ticket, one didn't. The flight is getting later and later. We have to close the flight. So we took this guy's ticket and gave it to the third member of the family and they went off. As the flight took off, through the Heathrow Airport, guy with his pajamas on literally came running through the doors. He said, please don't tell me the flight has gone. I said, no, sorry, it's, it's this way. He said, please. I have been trying for four years to get the leave to go to Hajj. Last night, I got the leave. I came and stayed at the hotel across from the airport. I was so excited. I sat all night. I couldn't sleep. And in the morning after Fajr, I packed my suitcase up and I lay down for a minute and I fell asleep. SubhanAllah. So he said, Look, what can you do? Now, I want you to put this guy to one side because I never forget this trip. The night before, a brother phoned us who was going from Stansted Airport mm -hmm. to Hajj with us. He said, can you guarantee me that you'll bring me back alive from Hajj? 
It's a true story. <laughs> what I hear is a true story. It's, an, it's impossible for us to tell you that. <laughs> we're we're that alive. So <laughs> say that again, just in case they ever got it. Say that but bit again. Seriously, the guy phoned up the night before. Yeah. And said, "Will you bring us back? Bring me oh, back no. alive? Alive?" He <laughs> said, "Look, I can't even." He said, "Look, okay then. Can you bring my organs back? If I die in in Hajj, I want my organs brought back into the country." He said, look, by the time the Saudis are finished with you, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's impossible. <laughs> he said, well, I'm not coming tomorrow. <laughs> it's entirely your choice. You've bought the ticket. It's up to you. We, we know, it's, it's not a compulsion. So this young brother phoned us. Let's put him to one side. The brother who missed the flight, we said, look, there's a flight we've got to Stansted. It's full. There's no, in these, these days were December, Christmas period. It was absolutely impossible to get a ticket in them. Mm. Nowadays, it's, the market is very different because it's obviously away from the holidays. So this particular brother, we said, go to Stansted Airport, wait for us there, we'll see what we can do, but we can't guarantee. So he went to Stansted Airport, subhanAllah, and when the flight was closing, the one seat that was left, the brother who phoned the night before, we ended up giving him his ticket. So, you know, the risk of the Hajj was written for those two people and not the brother who phoned up. And look how the story evolved. Yeah. So every year you hear certain mm -hmm. stories. There's one brother who came one year, his mother was so adamant that he go to Hajj and she passed away after he left. So every year there's, there's something different that happens. There's a, either an individual or an incident that mm -hmm. makes you remember. And now 11 years down the line, it's very hard to pick up which year happened yeah. what. Mm -hmm. um, but Alhamdulillah, you know, what's beautiful about the, the, the trips is that traveling the UK uh, on, on business and on work, Everywhere I go, I meet somebody from Hajj. Mm -hmm. But I can't remember what the name was. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> 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 yeah. every year is different. Every year is different. That's brilliant. Would you like to share anything about your journey for Hajj? Yeah, so how many, you know, I mean, not myself yet, really. I don't want to talk about anyone, but I, I have somebody that I know very, very close mm -hmm. who's uh, you know, uh, passed away now. Yeah. And mashallah, he was very, very wealthy. And every year he tried to go to Hajj. My father told me the story. Mm. Every year he's tried to go, but whenever he tried to go, this guy is very wealthy. I'm not going to say where he's going, but people will find out, yeah? Mm. But whenever he tried to go, yeah, he couldn't go, something cropped up. So the thing is, when your labay comes, yeah, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when your Ghazri comes, yeah, you're going to go, subhanAllah, you mm. know. What, what a place. And then when you go there, and you see the unity, you see the peace, 140 odd countries, people, different colours, you're all wearing the same two white cloths of ihram and the sisters wearing the dip type cloth, you know, and they're all saying labaik and you know what yeah, you just can't describe. You just mm. can't do and in the times of Arafat in Mina, you know, and when you're doing the thwaf and there are hardships. You gotta remember there are hardships. And there's one other thing as well, uh, the C D that we sent to you. Yeah. If you go to our website, uh uk, you email me from there, I'll send you a link to where you can download a PowerPoint presentation yeah. on how to perform Hajj Umrah from the minute you leave your home yeah, to go in there and the Ziyarat, I'll give you that link as well. So go to our, uh, Brother Rizzi, I sent it to you the other day. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll send value. you that and you can have it free. And we want you to, and you can even use it in your local madrasa, in your mosque, in your organization. And there's slides yeah, where there's each thing, yeah, each stage at a time of what you do. And it's very, very simple. Yeah, we can do each other. Mm -hmm. Have you seen it yet? Have you been through the CD? Well, yes, I've been through the CD and um, it's my bedtime reading. So <laughs> before you take a book with me now, I just go in there and have the laptop <laughs> next to my, my bed. So yes. I'm educating yeah. myself. So about, I mean, about thousands about of people have been inspired you know, by that CD. Yeah, and I want to thank everybody who was behind it, the production team, yeah. Brother Farouk and the Imams and all that. It's all been checked, alhamdulillah, you know, and uh, we'd like you to, yeah, and we'd like to send you that as a gift yeah, yeah. as well. We'll yeah. send you a link and you can download it, inshallah. And, uh, am I right in saying you made that was one of your first pieces of work, is that yeah. correct? Yeah, before I came to Islamic Posters, I was oh. involved in the mosque and uh, this is, it, it took us about, we, we did one presentation on Palestine, you know, on uh, the past, present and future, which is still not been launched, that took oh. me six months. Oh. And then a second one was the one on Hajj and Umrah, because I'd been, I wanted to share that with people, but we wanted to simplify it for people, so people could understand. Some books you open up and they're like an encyclopedia. You yeah. don't understand it because of what, what we do is we make stuff so people can understand. It's in perfect, simple English. Mashallah. Simple English Mashallah. and you, everyone can understand. Well, I can understand it. I know. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, you can then. No, no, no. You're <laughs> a lot more intelligent than that. Okay. 